She Devil Comedy Festival Best of the Fest. Please start clapping your hands for Dana Freeman. Thanks. Uh, I love performing for Eshel. These are the only crowds where a comic can say she's orthodox, trans, <laughs> and have the audience think, yeah, and... <laughs> Is that all you got? <laughs> so, you know, it's great that in Eshel I'm not unique in being orthodox and trans, but in the clubs I'm the only one, which is fine. Cause in comedy, being different is good. In orthodox Judaism, not so much. I don't care. I was always a wise ass. Even in my bar mitzvah speech, I said, today, I am a man. Tomorrow! <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> now, my bar mitzvah was awkward. I was 13, 4 foot 9, and weighed 60 pounds. <laughs> If that's Jewish manhood, no wonder we're not big in construction. <laughs> but we have macho guys and a militant fringe group. Yeah, with their slogan, every Jew a 22. Every Jew a 22? The average Jewish man is a 6. <laughs> that's why I transitioned. <laughs> My mother is so wise, she doesn't care about any of that stuff. Vanity, ratings, are you kidding? When her second husband died, she said she was done with men. That's why I transitioned. <laughs> no, no, no. I transitioned in 1990. Oh. You know, before it was fashionable. <laughs> and I was raised Orthodox Jewish, so you know, a little bit sheltered. LGBT was not on the menu. If you kept kosher, LGBT was large bagel with tuna. <laughs> so I had to explore gender orientation on my own. I was very methodical and made a list. And every time I discovered something, I checked it off, yes or no. And the first thing to go, hetero dude. Where are the straight guys at? Nobody. One person. <laughs> so much for straight pride, right? <laughs> okay. Well, that's, that's a question you'll never hear anywhere else ever. You know, because they're everywhere. Also, they take credit for everything. Their anatomy, their parents' wealth. Like, I saw this spawn of Satan millennial getting arrested, arguing with the officer. Do you know who my father is? <laughs> And the cops said, no idea. Have you tried Ancestry.com? <laughs> surprise, surprise, it was a trust fund baby white boy. You know, they don't have any real problems, so they gotta make stuff up. Like last year it was Ocean's 8, you know, because all female leads. And they were complaining, women should do comedy. Which is ridiculous and confusing to me, because I'm trans. What did I used to be funny? <laughs> Slow burn on that. <laughs> well, had I been more attentive, I could also have eliminated from my list gay boy. Yeah, because when my brother used to beat me, he would yell, don't be a faggot. He didn't say anything about tranny. <laughs> oh, he did not approve of my transition. He told me, we're religious Jews. We can't just go doing what we want. If I was doing what I wanted, I'd be on the beach with a hot blonde. He's 62, mean, and broke. The only way he'll ever hold a beautiful woman is hostage. <laughs> My mother, on the other hand, greatest ally. She's seen me through changes of profession, Changes in religious observance, and um, what other change I may have told you about. <laughs> yeah, I got a Mac. <laughs> My mother's great. She looks real young 
A few years ago, someone asked if she was 60. I said, I'm 50, our family's not that weird. <laughs> she's, uh, she's always on my mind. Recently, I saw a hot guy crossing the street. My first thought was, could I bring him home to mother? And I figured she'd appreciate it. It's been years since she's had any. <laughs> so when her second husband died, I was even a wise ass at his funeral. After the service, one of my mom's giggly friends introduced herself. Oh, your mother's so delicious, I just want to run away with her. I said, well, now's your chance. <laughs> She's really amazing. In 1986, I came out to her as gay. In 1987, as bi. And then later, this. And she was so traumatized, she had to form her own support group for parents of, you know, comedians. <laughs> And I sometimes wonder about the road not taken, you know, what if I had transitioned to 25, maybe gotten married, had a kid, might have transitioned later, that would have been a problem. My son would have been picked on in school, your dad's a girl. That's all right, I'd have taught him, oh yeah, well my dad has much better legs than your mom. <laughs> He wouldn't have been beaten up. He'd have been taken to school every day by the dykes on bikes. <laughs> oh, God. They're fabulous. You know they lead off the Pride March every year? Woo! Yeah, and they bring their kids. That's right, it's the dykes on bikes with tykes on trikes. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah, the march is this Sunday. You know it has a theme? Of course it does. It's organized by gay men. <laughs> Now, last year, the theme was defiantly different. It was pretty out loud and proud. In 1984, the theme was, you ain't seen nothing yet. Well, sure, because everyone was in the closet. <laughs> I've been to so many of these things. A few years ago, there were hecklers on the sidelines. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. What's next, a fisting parade? Nah, not a good kink for marching. <laughs> now, this year, the, the theme is Stonewall 50. Merchandise will be hair plugs and butt plugs. <laughs> and now we found the level of the room. <laughs> Oh, but it's gonna be fabulous. Two million LGBT people on the street, only 1% gay men. <laughs> yeah, because the other 99 can't see anything over 40 that isn't a sugar daddy. <laughs> you could have done better. <laughs> and as I see all these groups marching, I realize we're all on a mission of self-discovery. Like at Smith College, a women's institution in Massachusetts, almost 1% of the students transition. Now, that's an alarming figure, but there's an upside. Imagine some homophobic dad's upset his high school daughter's a lesbian. Maybe he could just send her to Smith and wait. <laughs> oh, so, you know, I finally got there, figured out the whole trans thing. And my partner and I have been together 28 years. <laughs> so lucky to have her. Not easy for trans women to date. Like, uh, I was in a tranny bar once. All right, I know what you're thinking. More than once. <laughs> and a guy's opening line to me was, are you a chick with a dick? I said, only if I'm dating you. <laughs> And then another one asked, you're Jewish transsexual? Did you have the surgery? Nope, this is my original nose. <laughs> I'm all depressed, ready to leave. And this idiot chats me up, five minutes later wants me to go down on him. I asked, how's this? <laughs> Yeah, not what he had in mind. <laughs> now, women are more subtle. 
I've been approached by ladies with something like, uh, so, you've got all the goodies in one basket, huh? <laughs> I'm Orthodox Jewish. We can't keep milk and meat in one basket. <laughs> Good night.